I hated my manager, so I made a video game on him. So it's like his face will be rotating around the screen, like tens of them, and then you can hit on him, and it explodes. So I'm not an engineer. Um, I studied physics. So I've, I've seen some good talks here and some wonderful, wonderful projects. And I was thinking hard, what should I talk about? Uh, but then uh, at the end, I thought that I'll just give a motivational kind of a speech or, or uh, I'll just tell my story. They say the best thing a child can do with a toy is to break it. And that's what I did most of my childhood. I was a breaker. I know it's like maker is the word, but I was a breaker. So most of my childhood was spent like that. Uh, when I reached teenage, I became really focused. And as all teenagers are, I was focused on just one thing. It was, it was about girls. How to impress the girl in my class, the girl which I like. So from maker, this focus shifted to being a focused guy who wants to impress the girl he likes. But there was one this small problem. I was too shy and uh, she didn't even notice me. And even some of the teachers in my class did not know my name. So how do I stand out of my crowd? You know, all those, uh, the studs and the champion guys of my class. How do I get myself noticed? I had no idea. Uh, I was not good at studies. I could not sing. Dancing was not my cup of tea. Cricket bat was till my this height. So I, I was not in the cricket team as well. So I had no way out. Uh, suddenly, one fine day, uh, I was reading the newspaper and I read about one invention. It was the clockwork radio. It was, I think, 92 or 93. Inventor was Trevor Bayliss. And I read about, read his interview. And he said, you know, he described how he came up with the invention. It was a very simple thing. He took a DC motor from a toy, attached it to the wind-up clock, and when DC motor runs in reverse, it generates electricity. And that powered a radio. And it was a revolutionary invention in the 90s because F in Africa, there were a lot, uh, AIDS was spreading, right? And there was no means to communicate with those, those people. So this radio helped them a lot and it was sponsored by World Health Organization. It was a very popular invention. And I realized that it was such a simple thing to do. He actually <coughs> broke two things. He broke the clock, he broke his toy and created an invention. I thought I could do something like that. In fact, I, I, I was doing things like that when I was not a teenager and my, I was not so focused. Uh, so what I did was internet did not exist then and it was very difficult to find out information. The only way was to go to the library. So I went to the National Library in Calcutta, which is the biggest library in Asia, I think. Uh, I, I, I went there for a couple of weekends and I read about telephones. Uh, mind you, those days mobile phones were also not very common. I, haven't, I hadn't seen one. Uh, so I read about telephones, how they work, and I came across one very uh, unique way of making microphones. I'll show you a picture. Look at this. Uh, what if you break a dry cell, right? It has got a carbon rod inside it. And you can just sharpen the ends of the carbon rod, break another cell, and make a sharpener kind of a hole in the other two rods, and it acts like a microphone. It does not need any amplifiers. Just connect it to a speaker, attach it to the wires, and if you speak at one end, you can just hear your voice on the other. It was like, I was amazed, you know, if you could when, uh, do something like that in such a simple way. I came back home, made this arrangement. Uh, I put this into two pencil boxes, attached it with a long wire, and then I was ready to go. I went back to school and made sure that I had a full demonstration in front of her in the recess time. And I just caught my friends and just did that demonstration there. And I, I, was, I was sure that I would win her heart. After all, it worked in such an amazing way. But unfortunately, she was more interested in her alu parathas rather than this invention. So it went unnoticed. But by the way, I, I met her a few years later and she remembered me like 
the guy who used to bring wires in the class. So <laughs> she, actually, she did notice. Uh, but this inspired me, you know. I had experienced the joy of making something. And it was, it was path breaking, you know. I, I wanted to experience this joy of creativity even more. It was just like, you know, a, a vegetarian has had ch tasted a chicken. You know, you add, a breaker had tasted the joy of making things. So I like that. I, I, by the way, I did, I am a vegetarian. I did ch taste chicken by mistake once. I liked it, though I regretted it later, but that's a different story for some other day. Um, so I, I, I bought some, uh, my, my father uh, had some old uh, books, uh, repairing manuals for radios, which had introduction to electronics. It was written in Hindi. So I started reading those books. I bought some books from uh, uh, old scrap shops, you know, uh, and started reading them as well. And soon, I set up a small lab at my home. It looked like this. Mind you, it's very dangerous to do electrical experiments sitting on a gas cylinder. <laughs> but that was the only option I had. So I set up this, this lab at home. And uh, my favorite pastime was uh, playing around with the radios. You could use the radio's you know, amplifier section to, uh, as a loudspeaker. Uh, you can use the oscillator section to transmit your voice. So at that time, without internet, without resources, uh, I had to figure out ways of just fiddling with it and using trial and error methods to uh, do this stuff. That's what I did for a long time. Uh, but my father saw me doing all this stuff. You know, I made the lab at home and spending time there. Uh, he thought that I have the great potential to be a television mechanic. <laughs> so he started telling everybody that, you know, my son is very good. He can fix anything. So soon, uh, in a couple of weeks, I found myself scratching my head in front of television sets. Uh, so all, all, my, all my neighbors, my father's friends, used to bring television sets. And, and they used to come often with you know, either sound problem or, or, or the picture problem or something is wrong. And they would expect me to fix it. So the first thing which I would do is clean the chassis you know, as soon as it comes, make it clean, then open it up, clean the PCB with kerosene oil so that it looks nice, and then, you know, spend hours looking at it, fiddling around with it, trying to fix it. But more often than not, uh, if the set had come with a problem in sound, I would make it dead. Now I'm in a fix. Even if I want to return the set, I have to bring the picture back. So I used to contact the professional TV mechanic, pay him the money just to get the picture back, not the sound, so that he takes less money, and then just cover it up and send it back, saying that it has a terrible problem which cannot be fixed, and you have to buy a new one. So ultimately, I realized that what I'm doing is you know, actually television laundry. Because I take sets, I clean them up, and then give it in the same condition. So, so I, I thought, you know, I, my, my father thought that I would make money using my talent, but I, it was not, not working out for me. So uh, I, had to, I had to do something, you know. I had to make money out of my hobby. Otherwise, uh, I couldn't continue it because I was in, investing time and money. And electronics parts were not cheap for me that time. Uh, so I made this. Uh, this is a device which I made when, uh, you know, by that time, you know, a couple of years had passed and s mobile phones were becoming common. So I thought, why not create a way of linking your safe with your landline telephones, which most of people had, or most of the shops had. And so that whenever someone tries to intrude into the safe, the landline phone, you know, gives a call to your mobile phone. So it was a very simple way. I just put two relays in there. One relay would do the job of lifting the, head, uh, the headset, right? And other relay would dial the redial button. That's it. And I was very excited about this. 
but i didn't know what to do next well there was no community there was no youtube there was no maker community at all i couldn't share this idea with a lot of people so this just remained as it is i, I know i one of my cousin got really excited about this idea he even spoke to a uh, few people in in maruti and they wanted something like that to work for maruti but my uh, <laughs> my technique of doing this was uh, very simple and very basic i could not cater for that so ultimately this idea also failed uh, so what i did was i i thought that i should focus on my studies so i went back to studying physics and uh, and i had a paper on electronics as well which i really liked so i did my graduation in physics honors and uh, after that you know i had electronics as well so i started looking out for job that was in 2005 and uh, well it it was very difficult being being a physics student what kind of job would you do uh, so my my relatives they live in gujarat right and whenever you know uh, a guy who is eligible for uh, doing a job of a marriage they start you know coming up to help they are too eager to help you in both these situations so they all started coming up and they started asking me so tell me alpesh what have you studied i would say science they say okay so you are you are you are in that doctor line i said no uh so they say oh okay i understand you are in those engineer line i would say uh no okay i get these days you know computers i would say no i i don't do computers either and then they would be like this <laughs> so uh well people used to think that i have wasted 3 years of my life studying something which is of no value but uh, uh luckily in those days bpos were coming up and this whole outsourcing concept was there and there was more demand than uh the supply so they needed more and more people uh ultimately hsbc bank opened uh uh Uh, outsourcing center in calcutta so for their banking operations in uk so they took me in i started working and but uh, you know it seems like uh, a pretty normal story but i started working i had left my hobby for a couple of years suddenly one day one fine day when i was uh, i was quite happy you know it was okay doing the night of Nine to five job, and coming back, wait, waiting for the weekends. But one fine day, when I was coming back from home on a weekend, uh, uh, I, I just went out for a bicycle ride. I was coming back, and something happened. I had something called panic attack. If that was not it, it was followed by depression. Oh, it was bigger than what it. <laughs> it. that followed by some anxiety disorder and it lasted for 7 years so and after that something called obsessive compulsive disorder bole to full chemical locha <laughs> so i didn't know what why it happened and you know uh, i have been uh, battling with this for like 5 Seven, eight years now. Uh, I, I went, went to my counselors, and they said that you lack uh, motivation in your life. Uh, you, you should pick up some hobby. And I, you know, it took me back several, a decade back, you know, almost when hobby was everything for me. So uh, I went to UK for an assignment, and out there. Uh, in london i met my, one of my friend shrikant he was doing research in optics he studied physics with me uh and he told me about this thing arduino which his uh fellow research researchers were using and he shared the uh, ted video of masimo banji with me uh and i saw that video i really uh and for the first time i came to know about this maker community 
And this made me realize that it's so easy to gain information and it's so easy to prototype things now. So I started playing around with it even more. I want to share a few stuff which I did. I can use the same thing to basically control anything. I can communicate with my computer as well. Um, I figured out it's, it's quite a simple thing and it could do some of the amazing stuff. So uh, I made Makey Makey using Arduino. Uh, I made a, a slingshot, uh, a slingshot device to play Angry Birds. Uh, you could use uh, Arduino Leonardo to make that. That's what I did. Uh, I made a pedal powered mobile phone charger. You could attach that to your bicycle and then you can charge your phone while you're riding. And I also tried my hands on Android programming. Uh, in fact, uh, when, I'll sh when I get a chance, I'll show you. Um, I hated my manager, so I made a video game on him. So it's like his face will be rotating around the screen, like tens of them, and then you can hit on him, and it explodes. So that was quite popular. <sighs> right, so uh, that, that, that was about it, you know. But why did I tell this story to you? Uh, well, I have not turned out to be a very successful person. So why should you listen to this story at all? Uh, the, reason is, the reason I told you this story is this. Uh, identify your hobbies, your passion. It may not help you to win the girl you like. It may not help you to fulfill the expectations of your parents. It may not help you to please your relatives. It may not help you to earn your money. It may not help you to get a very good job. But if you, if you don't pursue your hobby, without your hobbies, you will lose the meaning in life. And you would realize that at some point in time, as I did. So hobbies are important. So don't, just keep, just keep hold on to it. Thank you. <laughs>